Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Megara, or hi, if you're new. Yes, this is extra for me. This is really, really bloody extra for me. But today I'm talking about stuff I don't want to buy because I spend a lot of time thinking about makeup I do want to buy. And I've realised I also spend a lot of time looking on Instagram and thinking, I don't want to buy that. So this is a list of all the kind of makeup-y shit that I don't want to buy, or probably not gonna buy. I mean, there are a few bits on here that I might end up purchasing in the future, but it's really bloody unlikely because Makeup be expensive, and I'd be on minimum wage. Do the maths, it just doesn't add up. So first of all is a Makeup Revolution Friends Collection. And I saw this when it first launched, I'm going to lower my brightness a little bit. And it looks like this, like this big one in the middle, at first I was interested. The others, like the little, three little palettes on the side, the Rachel Monica and Phoebe ones, I wasn't that interested in because they're just very neutral, very kind of average palettes. Then I saw the reviews online and I just I just thought, I just don't need them. I, I looked at the lipsticks and there weren't really any that really appealed to me. They were kind of pinks and brights and this is unusual for me. I'm more of a nude lipstick kind of person. So I looked at it and decided, no, I'm just not interested. I own enough makeup. My cupboard is overflowing with eyeshadow palettes. I just don't need another one. It's the same with the, why can't I find anything on my feed anymore? With the Nightmare Before Christmas range. Like, I looked at this, I thought it was great, then I saw a review online and it was shockingly shit. Well, not shockingly shit, it's just a bit shit. Then I looked at it a bit more and decided, I've got those shades in my cupboard already, I may as well just, if I want to create a look like this, I may as well just use what I've already got. And this is my problem with Revolution. Their stuff is either really good, like when they do collabs, their stuff is amazing. But when they do it with like other brands, so they've got to pay licensing fees and all that, they up the price a little bit, which is understandable, but the quality of the product goes down. I'm just not into it. It's the same with the Disney Princess collection, because there's been this issue with the Friends one, and the Nightmare Before Christmas one, and now the Disney one. I'm just not interested in buying that one either, because I'm gonna go find this one now. It's probably right at the top of their feed. No, it's not. It is. So, this is the entire... Can you just not for a minute? Oh, it's I Heart Revolution. That's why it's not on there. I just don't find these overly appealing. Like, I can understand why you would. Like, the Cinderella one is a lot of blues and a lot of purples and that kind of thing. And generally, that'd be right up my alley. But at the same time, what are the quality of their shadows going to be like? Is there a reason why nobody's posted a review on them that I've seen yet? And that kind of thing. And that's what kind of I'm kind of frustrating with this because it could be really good and I was so excited when I saw that they were doing a Disney collection then I was just underwhelmed because also there I can't see a divide in between like the eyeshadows and the blushes and highlights so would they really work would I end up with blue all over my pink stuff what would the deal be so I'm, I'm just a bit over the whole revolution thing at the moment I may swing back around to it eventually but for the moment, I'm just I'm kind of a bit done with them because they just seem to have launch after launch after launch after launch. And nobody has that much money reasonably. Like the people who have it all either are saving up and know that they're just gonna buy this stuff or have it on PR or are doing it for reviewing it on YouTube. And I just, I don't have the money for that. Next up is Unicorn Cosmetics Wicked Palette. And again, this is kind of one of those palettes that I'm just not that inspired by. It's got very, a lot of very like light colours, a lot of very dark colours, and it doesn't really seem to have any kind of neutrally transition colours. Like the Nikki Tutorials palette is big, it's got big pans, it's got very useful shades, and I just don't see that in that palette. And I think it's a good idea to have that, but at the same time, I'm just not that into it. Like Unicorn Cosmetics, I love their lashes, but I'm just not that into the rest of their stuff. I've never tried their brushes. So it's just, I'm a bit underwhelmed with that palette. It's just a bit kind of out there and not in the kind of way that I like my palettes to be out there. The Huda Naughty palette is another one. And this is mainly because Huda is bloody expensive. The palette is $76. So more than 50 pounds for, for this. And it's kind of a lot of blushy, nudey shades. The colours do look kind of cool, but I've never been that inspired to buy a Huda palette. It's kind of a thing of, I could buy it, but have I already got shades which is similar? I just can't justify £76, 70 odd, 
$67 on a palette or 50 or quid, whatever it's gonna be on an eyeshadow palette. I'm just not that into it. So on a different slight tangent, I'm just not buying lip glosses at the moment. I'm not even wearing lip glosses at the moment because we're in a bloody pandemic. Like I wear my mask most of the day at work at the moment and my lipstick barely survives. I mean, I don't even know where my face mask is at the moment, but the inside of it is tinged with foundation and matte lipstick. So what is it gonna be like with lip gloss in there too? I just feel like producing lip glosses at the moment is kind of missing the mark completely at what audience we are aiming at because if you're wearing lip gloss you're probably not going to be going anywhere important and if you're wearing lip gloss and a mask what are you experiencing inside that mask because that cannot be comfortable. I like lip glosses I'm just not buying them at the moment because they're going to expire before we're out of this pandemic at this rate. The Foreo skin stuff. I, I get the idea of the exfoliators but Beauty Bear have now come out with their own which is like 30 quid which is half the price if not a quarter of the price of the Foreo ones those um mouth things where you just kind of rub it in i'm just not into that kind of thing like skincare can get a bit extra sometimes but at the same time should i really be paying like so that much money for a tool when you can get them like 10 quid down audi or whatever or 30 quid off beauty bay so i get that they're good i'm just not into them because they are so expensive like that is more than a day's wages for me Makeup advent calendars. I bought them the last few years and most of the stuff ends up in boxes that go to my family. Especially like revolution ones I bought. What one did I have last? I had um, the ASOS one last year. I still haven't got through half the stuff in that. I haven't even touched a half of it. And now that I'm, trying to, I'm saving up for a wedding and my car is good but it's old so I don't know what's going to go wrong with it. It's in very good condition but We've just had to replace the tyres and the brake fluid. I'm still saving up for a wedding and moving next year, so I just... I can't justify the expense of buying an advent calendar for stuff that I'm probably not going to want in four months. And it's just a bit of a novelty, and I've got shampoos that I got on my advent calendar last year that I haven't touched, so... The Too Faced Christmas Collection. It's the same shit, different packaging as it has been the last two years. The first year they produced a gingerbread palette, then it was a gingerbread spice palette, and now it's a pumpkin spice palette and it's very very similar each year so it's just warm tones and some shimmers and i looked at the pumpkin spice palette and i decided no i've got the gingerbread one in my cupboard that i got two years ago for 40 something quid i'm gonna keep the one in my cupboard and not spend another 40 quid like if you're after a warm tone palette go for it and if you've got the money to spend go for it but you can get so many other warm tone palettes with similar specs is that the right word for it? Specs? Similar quality stuff? For a lot cheaper and aren't limited edition because for me limited edition is a bit of an issue because that means can I keep using it on my Instagram and saying I'm using this and people getting interested in it and then discovering it's not continued. And I know I'm very small but I have this mindset of I don't want to push stuff that you can't get anymore because well what's the point? The fact that my lips are uneven it's really bothering me at the moment. Um neutral eyeshadow palettes I have a lot of neutral shades. I am more interested in brights and stuff like that. Like This is the Beauty Bay Brights palette. And I have created neutral looks using these two shades and shimmer. I don't need an entire palette to do it again, especially like the Jeffree Star Orgy palette because it's expensive for one and it's just neutral and it's got a dodgy name as well, so. But I just don't, if I'm going to buy a neutral palette for travelling, I'm just going to buy one that is cheap, not an expensive one, because you can't really go that far wrong with the neutrals. Not that I found anyway. Um, soap and Glory in general. Like the Soap and Glory skincare and hair care and body care and shit like that I am fine with, but their makeup collection is abysmal. They do not have anything for even medium dark skins in their foundation that I saw. Their concealer only goes up to medium. Um, their light shade range is also pretty shit. And I'm just not digging that. I know I'm a pale bitch. And I know that I am very fortunate to be pale because it makes it easier to find makeup and stuff. But people of colour struggle more. And 
I don't want to be part of the problem, I want to be part of the solution. I like helping people and if I can do it by supporting a brand that has a decent shade range, I will do that. Um, Jeffree Star, Blood Money, it's green, I'm not into greens. The Orgy palette I've already covered, I'm not into neutrals. And the Velvet Lip Trap collection. Those collections I'm just not interested in. I, I'm not interested in the greens, Jeffree Star himself is controversial. Like, I was interested in it before, like, um, the Blood Money, the purple one. But not blood money. Royal blood. The purple one. The hexagonal one. I was interested in it, saw the price, couldn't justify it. And we go from there. And because he's just been so controversial we should, controversial recently, I just I'm just not interested anymore. A lipstick I've got I'm using up. And I probably won't be repurchasing anything of his ever again because I'm just not into that shit. If you're going to be that controversial, you can get out of my makeup collection. And I'm also not binning it because I spent my good hard-earned money on it. Um, the P. Louise bases. This is nothing to do with the company in general. This is to do with the fact that it costs... If I buy one, it's like 3 dollars shipping. Two, 3 dollars shipping. I've got to spend 50 quid to get free shipping. And that is where my issue is. Um, that is more a me problem than a other people problem. It's the fact that I don't like paying for shipping and I'm not going to pay 50 quid for something I don't really know about. If they come onto like Beauty Bay or Look Fantastic, that kind of website, or available in Boots, I will be purchasing. Uh, Florence by Mills. I've looked at her stuff. I'm going to be doing a review on her skin tint and I haven't liked it. The, each time I've worn it, I just haven't liked it. It's kind of sit on my skin weirdly when it's been powdered down, so yeah. And the collection isn't that good, it's it's expensive and it's aimed at people who haven't aimed at teenagers and they haven't particularly got that much money unless they're very lucky and yeah. It's just something I'm just not interested in. The Urban Decay Stoned collection, it looks alright but it's just not up my alley that it's expensive. It's probably alright but I've never found Urban Decay shimmers to be as amazing as say oh, Too Faced shimmers or the ones in Beauty Bay's palettes, they're just not as good and that palette just being shimmers mainly, it's got like two or three mattes, I'm just not interested in it. Um, the new NARS foundation, that matte one that's been hyped up on Instagram everywhere, I'm not buying it and I'm not going to be testing it for Foundation Friday because it looks completely wrong for my skin type, like, and I've tested a lot of matte foundations recently but I'm just not into that, it just, it looks good. But for somebody who has got very dry skin in the winter, it's just not me. It's, it's just a thing that I'm just not interested in. And I don't want to just kind of waste my money. I, I do love the Fenars foundation I've got, but it's not one that I'm going to be going out my way to buy in the future. And the Sample View Beauty Equalizer Volume 2 palette. I'm going to go find this on Beauty Bay a second. So this palette looks a lot like a the hashtag palette by Violet Voss and that's the only reason I'm not going to purchase it is because I do like the look of the um, Equalizer palette and uh, Sample Beauty's palette but it looks too similar to something I already own and that's kind of it. So I'm hoping you like this video, give it a big thumbs up if you have, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, I know I have a weird thumb, it is double jointed, it can bend back like this but I can also do it on this thumb though, yeah. Um, if you've got any questions or anything you think I should try or have a look at, see if I would buy it or not, let me know down in the comments. And I'll see you next time for another lovely video. Bye!